right friends welcome back to q and a discussion today also there is small change we will upload revision session before evening and this lecture only one live lecture at 11 o'clock today this is a q and a discussion and the revision class will be uploaded before evening what we have done yesterday because there were some corrections in the slides so we could not complete that and definitely before evening we will upload that q and a revision let us look at q and a this questions and answers discussion revenue from taxes like excise duty all types of taxes like personal income tax corporation tax goes to consolidated fund of india cfi and government can use it for any purpose depending on the appropriation bill in the appropriation bill the amounts which are to be withdrawn from that consolidated fund of india that parliament has to give approval to the appropriation bill and this is correct and with regard to cess some people have several doubts and even newspapers also it differ from one newspaper to other newspaper the tax revenue from cess like swachh bharat cess krishi kalyan cess like that is first credited to consolidated fund of india the tax revenue from cess is first credited to consolidated fund of india and the central government after due appropriation made by parliament can utilize the money for the specified purposes so cess in fact the proceeds from cess also go to consolidated fund of india but the central government after due appropriation made by parliament apportions that money for the specified purpose right like central road fund like the krishi kalyan cess swachh bharat cess so these are examples but some of the newspapers have written that cess will not go to consolidated fund of india but i am sure that this is the right answer right and look at the following sentences cess and surcharges cess and surcharges need not be shared with the states and they do not come under the divisible pool of taxes i think probably most of you may know this both cess and surcharge go to the consolidated fund of india while surcharge can be spent for any purpose surcharge can be spent for any purpose but cess can only be spent for the specified purpose after due appropriation from consolidated fund of india both will go to consolidated fund of india and cess will again come back for the specified purpose the amount which is deposited into cfi will come back after due appropriation through the parliament right so these two things so why i have taken these two things is some of the students are raising doubts about cess and surcharge look at the third one quite often we come across carbon neutrality what exactly do you understand by carbon neutrality three things please don't forget one is carbon neutrality second one is carbon sequestration third one is carbon credits carbon neutrality carbon sequestration carbon credits here what is meant by carbon neutrality carbon neutrality is achieving net zero carbon emissions overall target is achieving net zero carbon emissions my industry may release 10 tons of carbon dioxide at the same time i should have a mechanism to absorb that 10 tons of carbon dioxide whatever the way when i am releasing 10 tons of carbon dioxide i should be in a position to absorb that 10 tons of carbon dioxide so that is uh, in fact g- net zero carbon emissions emissions will be there but there should be some mechanism to absorb those emitted carbons right so it is achieving net zero carbon emissions by balancing a measured amount of carbon released with an equivalent amount carbon sequestrated carbon sequestration there are two methods one is terrestrial sequestration other one is geological sequestration terrestrial sequestration is 
if some wetlands are there, they will absorb this carbon released, right. So, this carbon emissions will be released terrestrially by developing these wetlands and some other mechanisms which can act as carbon sink and another thing is geological sequestration. Geological sequestration means you capture the carbon emissions and put it into underground. So, sequestration can take two forms, one is a terrestrial sequestration, second one is geological sequestration and if at all I am not able to absorb the emissions, then another mechanism is there carbon credits. So, please understand what is meant by carbon neutrality. It is achieving net zero carbon emissions by balancing a measured amount of carbon released with an equivalent amount sequestered or offset or buying enough carbon credits to make up the difference. So, when I am emitting carbon dioxide, then I should have a mechanism to sequester it. If it is not possible, then I can have this mechanism of carbon credits also, right. What is meant by carbon credit? A certificate showing that a company or government as has paid to have a certain amount of carbon dioxide removed from the environment is known as carbon credit. If I am releasing 10 tons of carbon dioxide and my friend's company Y, some environment company is in the field of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, then I will pay to that firm which is the mechanism known as carbon credit. I am not able to neutralize my carbon emissions, then I will approach another firm which is taking out carbon emissions and this mechanism is known as carbon credit. So, please understand certificate showing that a government or company has paid to have a certain amount of carbon dioxide removed from the environment is known as carbon credit. Right friends, these three things please do not forget carbon sequestration, carbon credit and the third one is carbon neutrality. These are quite often in the news. Then border hats, these are quite frequently in the news. What is meant by border hat? Border hats are nothing but traditional system of marketing. Some local forest produce may be there, some locally made indigenous product may be there and there should be some traditional local market, right. So, they are nothing but traditional system of marketing the local produce through local markets and look at the following sentences. Here border hats are in operation along Bangladesh, please understand. Officially, they are not in operation in Myanmar. Myanmar, some unofficially there may be border hats, but as per the PIB report, only border hats are in operation along the Bangladesh border, that too in two states that is Meghalaya and Tripura. So, Meghalaya and Tripura are two states where border hats are located at present and officially border hats are in operation along Bangladesh only, along Myanmar unofficially they are in operation and Bhutan there are no border hats and the first one is wrong then the trade is permitted to be carried out. As I have already told you, these border hats are in operation along Bangladesh border and here the trade is permitted to be carried out in Indian rupees, Bangladesh taka and on barter basis also, barter system. Barter system means if I am having some produce of rice, if my friend has got some produce of some salt, then without the intervention of medium of exchange that is money, we will exchange the products that is the barter system, right. So, 2, 3 correct. Shale gas is quite often in the news and look at the following sentences. Shale gas is a natural gas that comes from shale formations instead of other rock strata. Shale rock please do not forget, shale is also sedimentary rock. 
So, shale is sedimentary rock, shale gas is a natural gas that comes from shale formations instead of other rock strata like limestone or sandstone absolutely correct. The shale gas reservoirs are trapped within rock formations with very low permeability. Please understand this is one important point. The shale gas reservoirs are trapped within rock formations with very low permeability. This is wrong. Please correct it. Very low permeability and the gas is released into the well by stimulating the shale formation through hydraulic fracturing. So, here 1 and 3 correct. So, hydraulic fracturing and please understand this drinking water aquifers are normally nearer to the ground level. This goes quite deeper maybe 3 kilometers or so and here high pressure water along with the mixture of sand water along with the mixture of sand and additives is forced. This is known as hydraulic fracturing and here fissures are formed and sand will go to these fissures and keep those fissures open and subsequently shale gas is collected into the well, right. So, this is the mechanism of hydraulic fracturing. Please do not forget, we will discuss sometime in the next class. Look at the following sentences with regard to EPF and NPS. I have given three sentences. Please understand all three are correct. This clearly says the differences between employees provident fund and the national pension system. National pension system is a voluntary defined contribution retirement savings scheme and at present it is open to all the citizens of the country all the citizens of the country including NRIs can have contributory can have contribution to have this national pension system. So, NPS is open to all whereas, employees provident fund or EPF is for those employed in the organized sector only. So, EPF is maintained by the trustees and EPF is for those employed in organized sector. Second one is employees provident fund corpus is mostly invested in debt instruments and the investments in equity are capped so as to reduce the risk. So, here the investments in equity at present permitted is up to 10 percent I think and finally, they are capped at 15 percent. So, less exposure to equities will be there in provident fund corpus, more exposure to debt instruments and debt instruments are less riskier in comparison to equity instruments. That is why EPF corpus is predominantly invested in debt instruments whereas, national pension system has a three plans. You can opt for equity, government bonds and corporate debt and in case you opt for equity, the equity allocation can go up to 50 percent, right. Do not bother about the figures, they might have changed in due course of time, but please understand the uh, what you call the mechanism of operation of EPF as well as national pension system. So, this one is correct then the returns on NPS are market based. This national pension system returns are market based whereas, this central board of trustees of EPFO declares the interest rate to be paid on EPF corpus for the year, right. So, these three are major differences between EPF and NPS. So, from examination perspective please keep in mind. So, EPFO is one of the largest social security organizations in the world. So, these things please go through it. Punjab government has launched country's first amphibious bus project and Harike wetland near Amritsar. And look at the following sentences. Harike wetlands are the largest wetlands in North India. And here the wetland and the Harike lake were formed by constructing the headworks across the confluence of Bias and Settlers rivers. Another point is it provides ecological support to migratory fauna and 
number of globally threatened species such as Indus dolphins and gharials are situated here. Then it is designated as the Ramsar wetlands of international importance. So, this hurricane is into the news that is why I have taken this. Then Gothard base tunnel, this was inaugurated and look at the following sentences. It is the world's longest and deepest railway tunnel around 57 kilometers. It is the world's longest and deepest railway tunnel. The route passes through Alps mountains, passes below Alps mountains and it is situated in Switzerland. These three are correct. So, please understand about this. The world's first genetic garden, garden of halophytes, MSS Swaminathan Research Foundation established this first genetic garden of halophytes in coastal town of Vedaranyam in Tamil Nadu and this has been set up by MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. So, you should have clear idea about halophytes. Yesterday when I was discussing geography aspects, I mentioned these things. Halophytes are salt tolerant and salt resistant plants. And these assumed significance because nowadays lot of salt intrusion is taking place underground. Lot of intrusion of saline water or you can say lot of intrusion of this sea water into the coast plants is taking place. So, this assumed significance. Halophytes are salt resistant and salt tolerant plants. They can thrive and complete their life cycles in soils and waters containing high salt concentration. Another point is at present they constitute around 2 percent of terrestrial plant species. These halophytes they constitute around 2 percent of terrestrial plant species, but they are very important in the context of increasing salination of land. Majuli declared as the world's largest river island and look at the following sentences. You may have a doubt that why it is being repeated. There is a point in it. Please look at all these sentences. Majuli, the largest river island. Another thing is it was recently converted as a district and the chief minister of Assam stated that it is going to become the first carbon neutral district leave those aspects. Here look at these sentences. It topped previous record held by Brazil's Marajo Island in Amazon River. Please understand previous record was by Marajo Island in the Amazon River and specifically if you look at Majuli Island, specifically if you look at Majuli Island, it is surrounded by Subansiri River in the north. Subansiri is the tributary of Brahmaputra. So, surrounded by Subansiri river in the north, main Brahmaputra river towards the south and Karikatiya Suli split channel of Brahmaputra towards northeast. Another important aspect is it is inhabited by Mishing tribal people. This is also very important Mishing tribal people. At the same time, it is also associated with Assamese neo vaishnavite culture. This island is associated with Assamese neo vaishnavite culture initiated by Saint Reformer Srimantha Shankar Deva in 15th century. So, these things very very important if you look at Majuli island from examination perspective, right. We have discussed this is the location of Majuli island. Then Kanchenjunga National Park is now World Heritage Site and look at the following sentences. And please do not forget, this is India's first mixed World Heritage Site. There are 35 World Heritage Sites and out of which this is India's first mixed World Heritage Site. What is the meaning of mixed World Heritage Site? It combines the characteristics of both natural and cultural, both nature and culture combined. It covers around 25 percent of Sikkim and cultural significance is because of various religious practices of Buddhism. Please understand, second one is wrong. This Kanchanjunga National Park 
is a world heritage site and it is the first mixed world heritage site that is the first point. Mixed means it has got significance of natural and cultural. Second point is it is 25 percent of Sikkim it covers and the cultural significance is because of religious practices of Buddhism. And another important aspect is it contains Tolang monastery. Tolang monastery, this is slightly this side, please understand. So, this is a Tolang monastery and this monastery is a gompa located in the park's buffer zone. So, when someone talks about Tolang monastery, this is in this park's buffer zone and not only that, it is a gompa. What is the meaning of gompa? Gompa in Buddhism is also known as ling. These are ecclesiastical fortifications of learning, lineage and sadhana. So, to understand this is the trait of Tibetan Buddhism first point. Tibetan Buddhism second point is it combines the characteristics of Vihara and university. Vihara and university, this combines these characteristics. I am talking about Gompa and this is associated with the Tibetan Buddhism and these are quite common, these Gompas are quite common in Tibetan religions, regions including parts of China, India, Nepal, Ladakh and Bhutan, right. So, here this is a Tolang monastery, it is a Gompa in Sikkim and considered to be most sacred monasteries in Sikkim. Then Kanchanjanga is the third highest mountain in the world. So, 1, 3 and 4. So, please understand the significance of this world heritage site Kanchanjanga National Park. Then let us go ahead. Chandigarh capital complex, this became UNESCO world heritage site and look at the following sentences. All of you are familiar, it is designed by Swiss born French architect Le Corbusier and this became part of the world heritage sites of transnational category and it is a part of UNESCO recognition of Le Corbusier architect architectural works in different parts of the world. India's this Chandigarh capital complex is one of the item which is in the transnational category. The point to note here is Lee Corbusier works became part of this transnational category of this world heritage and India's capital complex is one of them. And the next point is the capital complex buildings include the Punjab and Haryana High Court, Punjab and Haryana Secretariat and Punjab and Haryana Assembly. China has established country's first dark sky reserve and some places it is mentioned as dark sky preserve and some places it is mentioned as a dark sky reserve and two things I would like to tell you. One point is it is a free of artificial light. It is a free of artificial light pollution. These only called this dark sky reserves. Then another point is this artificial light if it is not there then astronomical objects can be better investigated or viewed. So, to eliminate this artificial light regions will be declared as dark sky reserves. So, look into the sentence, China has established country's first dark sky reserve for astronomical observations in the Tibetan prefecture of Nagri and look at the following sentences. It is an area that is kept free of artificial light pollution. <coughs> Second point is the purpose of dark sky reserve is generally to promote astronomy very important and it can seek the accreditation or you can say recognition from the International Dark Sky Association. This International Dark Sky Association is the non-profit organization based in USA and if it gets the accreditation, it will help reserve in preserving and protecting the night time environment and dark skies globally, right. This is all about dark sky reserve of China established in Tibet. 
Mahasthangar was declared as a Sark cultural capital for 1617. This is the location of Mahasthangar. This is in Bangladesh. Yesterday we have seen this and it is the 3rd century BC archaeological site in Bogra, Bangladesh. It is the 3rd century BC archaeological site in Bogra, Bangladesh. Second point is, it is the ancient capital of Pundravardhana, ancient capital of Pundravardhana, home of the Pundra, a group of people not speaking languages of Indo-European family, right. So, both are correct. Then, which of the following cities in our country for the first time have been designated as the members of UNESCO's Creative Cities Network. UNESCO's Creative Cities Network, two cities, Varanasi and Jaipur, please do not forget. These two, Varanasi as well as Jaipur, these two are declared as Creative Cities Network. And what is meant by Creative Cities Network? Here, the cities that have recognized creativity as a strategic factor of sustainable development. Creativity as the strategic factor of sustainable development and what are the creative fields? The creative fields are seven numbers. You see, these are the creative fields, crafts and folk arts, media arts, film, design, gastronomy, literature and music. Right. So, this is about Creative Cities Network. Then let us go ahead. The economic situation in which inflation and economic stagnation or recession occur simultaneously. Here, economic stagnation or recession normally it does not lead to inflationary tendencies, but when the economic situation is both inflation as well as stagnation or a recession occur simultaneously and remains unchecked over a period of time. It is known as stagflation and here these things do not forget disinflation. When some inflation is there, some 6 percent, 7 percent, something like that, then it is under control and reduced. You can say if some 6 percent inflation is reduced to 5, 4 and half, 5, something like that, then it is known as disinflation. But opposite of inflation is deflation. Inflation is increase in the general price level and deflation is decrease in the general price level. Hyperinflation is the country's currency losing value altogether. Why we keep money in our pocket? We keep money in our pocket not only for day to day use, but also as a store of value. That means, it will have some value later on, but if my money loses value, then altogether chaos will be there, right. Then quite often we hear about hyperinflation and look at the following sentences. Hyperinflation is the phase where money has long ceased to be a store of value in hyperinflation money will long cease to be store of value. I cannot keep money in my house, then what happens? Its value will go away. That means, currencies will become almost redundant, you can say. The store of value purpose will be totally go away. So, under the circumstances, you call it hyperinflation. So, hyperinflation is a primary contributor to economic instability altogether and the crisis in Venezuela is example of hyperinflation, right. So, please do not forget. Recently, this I think I asked previously also, more than 100 Nobel laureates signed a letter to Greenpeace in connection with the golden rice. This Greenpeace is objecting the introduction of golden rice and 100 Nobel laureates in fact, retail to Greenpeace. Why? Because this golden rice will save the population, millions of population from micronutrient deficiency, right. Golden rice is genetically engineered crop. 
it is engineered to contain beta carotin a carotenoid and human body converts beta carotin into vitamin A. You can say through genetic modification it is fortified with beta carotin and ultimately human body synthesizes beta carotin into vitamin A. Right? So, all 1, 2, 3. Last one during Brexit vote, the issue of Gibraltar, British overseas territory came into focus. It shares the boundary with the Spain. Right? Gibraltar, please look into this. I discussed number of times. So, Gibraltar is the overseas British territory having border with the Spain. Right? So, this is Gibraltar Strait. Please do not forget. Right, friends, this concludes our Q and A discussion for today. And this revision class I will upload before evening. So, sorry for the inconvenience because of some corrections in the PPTs because we are producing lot of text in the PPT format and looking at its accuracy is most important part. So, as per the standards in learning space, we follow this practice. So, sometimes this became necessary to postpone this. So, please understand today only one live lecture, we completed Q and A discussion and the revision will be uploaded before evening. Right friends, have a nice weekend. Thank you.